Thank you for your introduction. Indeed, I came back three and a half years ago from the U.S., where I spent almost 35 years in my, li my life there. I was a uh, so-called foreign student. Okay, I have an alien car in the United States when I arrived. And uh, after 35 years, okay, I'm a citizen of the U.S., so today is it's, uh, the birthday of the United States. Okay, but we are working very hard here, okay. Uh, anyhow, uh, I appreciate very much all the THE. I think bring a really a first cluster of the delegates come to this conference. I think we have an extensive discussion in the first section, and thank you for the President Shin for the kind uh, process that I admire, I admire so much. I wish Taiwan is South Korean, okay. But it is not, okay? But I will tell you, how can we transform Taiwan into the next step, right? Uh, how can I do it? It just keep pushing this one? Okay, so today, uh, I will brief to you regarding about the three and a half years ago, I arrived and come back to Taiwan and how we, I try to implement some of the better idea or the modern idea or the United States idea, okay, to this small so-called medical university. And there are many reasons I choose this one, okay. I don't go the big university like a national saw, that's too big, okay, or national Taiwan university, that's too big, because the smaller one is much easier, like a Singapore, okay. All right, so that's my topic. Okay, we're talking about that. I think uh, we all know the best education, okay, particular high education, are uh, from England, Europe, and United States. Okay, most of us are always try has been trained in these two places. Okay, so each time we have to learn, say, why, which parts they are good. Okay, so you can see at least the. Uh, the so Ivy League, okay, MIT, or England's Cambridge, or Oxford. If I don't mention your, your university, I apologize, okay. All right, okay, and so, and so on, so on, so on. And then next, the last, last one is I say, what is the best university in Taiwan? I cannot list anyone. Okay, that really says things for us. Although Taiwan is very, 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 very emphasized okay, in terms of higher education. But what is go wrong in our country? And why we don't build the top university in the world for the people are able to come? So those are parts. However, although we know there are many, many good universities in the US and in London and in England, the key is we cannot transplant a university that come to this country. Okay, there are different culture, different people, different professors, different disciplines. There's no way that we can move MIT to Taiwan. There's no way to move the Cambridge over here. Okay, that's not possible. The possibility is to build a university in the way that we think to pick up all the best parts of them and then modify them, adapt it to this country and try to build something different. All right, so I constant debate with the people in Taiwan they said the best university, always the public have funded the university, and such in Korean caste is probably the best. Okay, in Taiwan, the best is the National Taiwan University. I said wrong. The best university is always private funded university. Take a look about that. Okay, this list in here, all right? So the world best university, always private funded university. And the reason is very simple. It's a provide flexibility, provide they, you know, you can change the university in a way to adapt the society quickly. Okay, you can lead the society quickly because you are adapt to the society. Those, both things are very important to do. Okay, so you can see I put a yellow card there. Okay, that's where I graduated from, it's number 20. Okay, I always encourage my friends, kids, don't go to UC Berkeley. Okay, their undergraduate is sucks, okay. The best one is the graduate school, all right? But under is not good enough, okay? The under has to go to Stanford, 
or go to Harvard or go to Emory, go to others. Anyhow, I, I know there is no alumni from UC Berkeley right here, right? <laughs> so I can make this joke. OK. But anyway, so a uh, few minutes ago, we hear the first talk regarding so-called the complaining in terms of politician. And now I have to list this complaining about how difficult to build a modern university in Taiwan. You see, I can list and song, 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 song in here. Okay, for example, bureaucratic education system. 35 years in the US, I never heard the Minister of Education. But after I come back, every day is Minister of Education. I say, that does not allow, that does not what the follow the rule, all the stuff in there, and get me really mad. Okay, I say, you know, what's wrong about this so-called Minister of Education? And I just hear the president saying that his university does not belong to the Minister of Education. It belongs to the Minister of the Science and Technology. And really, good luck for you. Okay. And so, this Minister of Education, because they think the university must be uniform, unified. Okay. And uniform, the government in a certain way. That's clear not a case okay, in Western country. Okay, so I can this there so much in here, I even have, have to hire a professor, and the professor is aged more than 70. He said, no, you cannot. It's too old. Okay, it's a joke, is that correct? I'm approaching 70, so I must open this rule. Anyway, anyhow, at least there's so much in here, bureaucratic education system, outdated measuring system and accreditations. Okay, outdated, truly outdated. Okay, every university has to be accredited. I said, I asked them, said, by whom? By whom? Okay, they can answer to me. By professor, you appear. But when we are the top, who is going to accredit us? They cannot answer. I constantly challenge them. Sorry about that. Okay, no investment in education, no tuition, no government grant, low donation. Particularly the last one, low donation. Okay, in the US, we always donate from at least 5% of our salary. But in this country, particularly in this part of the country, okay, this part of the world, the donation seems to always have the purpose to donate. Okay, so donation is very low. So this habit has to be changed. Okay, of course, our tuition is very, very low. How low is low? Okay, you cannot believe it. Okay, you see, in a medical school, okay, if a public school is costing only 600 US dollars, okay, per semester, okay, and then in a private school, okay, a, a year, academic year, is 5,000 US dollars. Okay, my university in California is 50,000 public school. That's 10 fold difference. Okay, right? It's okay. Everybody can go to the uh, college with a low tuition. Good. Okay, the base is free, right? But we still have a, a step to go. Few renowned scholars are available. Limited talent pools and, and, comp and uh, competitive salary. Okay, although, you see, except this university. Okay, the, mass, the majority of public universities, the salary is very low, except my university, CMU. So you still can come if you want. Okay. Lack of a high quality infrastructure, that's also the case in here, because of less investment. So infrastructure is not there. Okay. And then reach the college admission needed to distort the college preparation, means high school. Okay, how they are going to prepare to the college. Making the innovative or creative environment for them. And so on, so on. I don't want to list in this much. And the most important, like a few minutes ago, we just discussed about how the politician influence higher education. Okay, in Taiwan, it's the same things. Okay, the politician, they think they know everything. So even the education, oh, you should do this, you should do this, so, so, so a whole bunch of regulation. That's the reason we have to change the political system by putting our own people, train them as a politician. Then you believe they are, must be good because they must be listened to the president of the university. Correct? That's the way to go. All right. Anyhow, so uh, our university is small. So our university mission is to cultivate healthcare professional through integrated Chinese medicine and the Western medicine 
to mo promote a medical service for the well-being of the society. Very simple. The CAIS is have a very distinct mission to develop the probably the you know the best innovation technology okay to uh, to the uh, to benefit the human humankind. And for us is to take care of your health. Okay, that's very, very human. That's our, our, our goal. So the university is, I already told you, very small. It's an egg college. And so we have roughly 6,000 uh, undergraduate students and then 1,000 graduate students, 510 faculty, okay, and roughly one to one to one professor, assistant, associate professors, assistant professors. But we do have a very large hospital system. Okay, that it's second largest system in this country. So we have right now 5,000 beds, and we are going to move up to the 7,000 beds to take care of patients. Okay. So this is a simple, simple picture for our university. This is our teaching building, and there are a couple pictures here. This is our hospital, and those are the services in here. Okay. And this university original is a teaching college, okay? And so this teaching college, indeed, we are also doing quite well in terms of the teaching uh, process. So we have awarded by the Minister of Education uh, many years, around 10 years, okay? Give us uh, some money. You can see this is 7,000, 7,000, uh, one, one. Okay, it's roughly two million US dollars, 2.2 .2 million US dollars. It's a very small amount of money, but uh, to us, it's a quite a big sum because a low, you know, low tuition, so that money can do something for our students, okay? And in the meantime, so we also received the from Minister of Education for the so-called top center, research center. This is a so-called uh, GMU, Traditional Chinese Medicine Research Center. They give us, okay, 100 million NT, okay, 100 million NT is how much? Some by one, some by one, three million US dollars, okay. That's, we are really quite happy about it. But it's not the money, it's the prestigious in terms of the name that we are in the one of the top university, okay. Okay, our students, okay, national examination passion rate, okay, because we are a medical university, so our dentist, okay, our TCM doctor is always 100%. And that means it's the number one in this country. Our uh, Western doctor, okay, is 99%. Okay, so it's second to the best. Okay, rest of them, okay, all the professional is always about the average of this country, and it's doing quite well. Okay, and then we have uh, excellence of continued education. Okay, so that means you know uh, service to the community and have the. Uh, adult, okay, or uh, kids, and come to receive the additional education, okay, all right. So, uh, of course, in this country, okay, in terms of the, this tiny achievement that has been get uh, so-called rec recognitions, and then in inside this country, we are always named in the top twenty or top ten of this uh, university compared to rest of them. Okay, I think I don't want to uh, go through this detailed part. Okay, and our professor and uh, employee is also get recognitions worldwide. Okay, particularly our chairman Tai. Okay, he's uh, uh, recognized as 2015 Outstanding Technology Manager Award. Indeed, he deserves this one. It's an incredible uh, person in here. And so there are many, many professors. The second one, Professor Zhao, Gen, Zhao Genlin, He's the war expert of the acupuncturist, okay, as safe as the expert of the UNESCO, WHO. He's the probably very few one hold a Taiwan passport and enter the WHO without kicking out by the people. So we are very grateful that we can have that chance to do so. Okay, All right? And so the research and publish this is an article. Of course, in this year, we, you know, for the past five years or so, average roughly uh, 2,000, you know, up and down, okay? And average of the every faculty is roughly four papers in that way, okay? And so we are pretty much emphasized about quality of the paper. So in Taiwan, 
Okay, our quality is ranked as a number four compared to the NTU, uh, NT, NTHU, NTU or NCU, Tsinghua uh, Daxie, Taiwan Daxie, and the NCU is, uh, what's that? Jiao Tong Daxie. Okay, and now it's our turn in that range. Okay, so that's pretty much we are emphasizing in terms of the publication quality. Okay, so, but that's not enough. I will tell you why it's not enough for me. So, okay, university and industrial partnerships. Okay, and that's the NT dollar. For, unfortunately, it's not US dollars. Okay, that's, we have to work hard for that. Okay, so uh, it's keep going up in this way in terms of that industrial pay us uh, the money or uh, build a company together or the technology transfer keep going up. Okay, okay, okay. This is the rank that come to everybody's nerve, okay. You can see that the CMU in terms of the uh, uh, A R W U, counting the Jesus, counting all those parts, all those in, uh, criteria, we are ranked roughly uh, 200 in this range. Okay, but in the THE, we are ranked in the just little bit above the 500, okay, and so on. But the important part is that no matter what kind of the standard to rank our university in Taiwan, we are definitely within the top 10, okay, between two to six or eight in that range, okay. Of course, that does not mean that we are very happy about it. There's no reason for that, okay. So, talk about a little bit about university hospital system. Okay, the university uh, own the Taizong Hospital, Children Hospital, Beigang Hospital, Tainan Hospital, and uh, going to have the Xinzhu Hospital open in 2018. And total, we have 5,000 beds. When we own the Xinzhu Hospital, then we'll go up to almost 7,000 beds in there. Okay, and you can see this is a, a second, serve as the second largest healthcare system in this country, right? And that uh, our chairman is the expert in the hospital system, and we all have a superintendent, uh, Dr. Zhao is a uh, neurosurgeon, okay, taking care of the hospital. And uh, there are many, many areas that we are doing quite well in these parts, okay. All right, so this hospital and this university is very unique because we combine the Western and the Eastern medicine to get together. Okay, so this is our so-called contemporary Chinese medicine. You can see it's very low uh, equipment but you can get a service very easily and then not too much painful because of, you know, very little uh, uh, penetrate uh, diagnosis. Okay, and then our Western parts you can hear, you can see we have so-called advanced mini invasive surgery with artificial heart implant and all many uh, high technology in here, okay, included a high, uh, so robotic surgery and so on in here. Okay, like everything the United States has it, we has it. So there's not much difference in that part. Okay, so after I come back, I say, what's the goal of this university? Okay, I will read every, read it again. Building CMU to be the top university in the healthcare profession with great emphasis on both Eastern and Western medicine as well as basic and the clinical research. I put this research in here rather than say teaching. Teaching, we already do quite well. So next is how to build this university into the, as a research university. So indicator of top university, that's we always keep in mind, is a graduate are highly demand. No doubt that this university graduate are highly demand. Before they graduate, you know, all the hospitals are already re, uh, reserved. Okay, our students you know, go to, to the service. Okay. The leading and cutting edge research that we are missing, okay? And records of technology transfer that benefit the society greatly that we are trying to improve, okay? The first one, university pride among faculty and students. This is the criteria I added, okay? Because, you know, if faculty and students are always proud of their own university, this university got to be good, no doubt about it, okay? So that's 
the so-called top university, and that's also the goal to reach it. Okay, how to become the top university? Of course, the first one is the faculty, okay, and students. How to recruit and cultivate, okay, the top faculty and students, and provide a quality learning environment to support the top tier teaching and research. Okay, develop an administration system with vision and the flexibility to better break bureaucracy and decision-making process. And this is particularly true. Okay, when I'm in the United States, I serve as department chair, I always complain how stupid the university president. Okay, <laughs> now it's my turn to be a university president, and now my faculty is complain how, how stupid I am. Okay, so through this process, then I can get in smarter. Okay, make a university better. Okay. All right, so I, I think the step to the top university, talent recruitment, restructure of the university, how we upgrade, teaching excellence, improving research capacity, globalization, academic industrial cooperation, those are the least agenda uh, during my three and a half years. And so I, I thank you for the THE giving me this opportunity to update what we've done, what we have done, and what we plan to do to reach that goal. So, uh, during the past two years, we recruit 111 faculty. Okay, that's not enough. Okay, we are still have 100 faculty to be recruited, and so provide a 100 million U.S. dollars. So in Taiwan, we calculate one million per faculty. In the U.S., that's not enough. Okay, in Taiwan, maybe. But if we want to compete a global uh, talent, maybe we only can recruit 50 faculty, but that's good enough. So in any other university's faculty, you want to live in Taiwan, welcome, apply. Okay, we appreciate that too. Okay, regardless of from England, Australia, or uh, Canada. Okay, right. Anyhow, so that's our efforts, and we break all the system in terms of how to recruit the best people. Okay, Taiwan has a rigid in terms of what kind of degree, what kind of experience, how many years we, you can be, what kind of level the professor. And I want to break this system as, as soon as you are good. Okay, you have potential that will give you the right rank, right salary, okay, with so very flexible salary rather than the Taiwan's fixed salary in the public university. Okay, and so cultivation. Of course, recruiting is one way because the talent pool is quite limited. Okay, Taiwan is not an English-speaking country. Okay, we still speak Mandarin, still speak Taiwanese. Fortunately, both languages I am quite familiar. Okay, so I can come back. All right, and so to reach the global uh, talent is always a difficulty. Except you marry the Taiwanese lady. Okay, then you welcome. Or what? Or, a, or you marry the Taiwanese lady? Or our, what's that? Are you are the, what? What do you say? The other side is what? Okay. I cannot remember now. Sorry. Okay. So those are a possibility to recruit as some of the uh, uh, foreign talent come to our country. Okay. That's our limitation. I think Korean probably also facing the same problem in there because it's not an English-speaking country. Okay, that's our limitation. Uh, and how are we going to push a campus to become an English-speaking campus? That's really a major effort. Okay, you believe it? When I want to first run a, a meeting in English, okay, all my staff immediately say, no, no, I don't understand your English. That's the difficult part, okay? Anyhow, so, to do the different way is we have to cultivate our own talent, okay? And then to build those young people become our faculty. So I designed the all different kind of procedure, uh, 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 track, okay? To then allow the, our young people to pre-end as a faculty and then until they are fully able to, be, to do the research independently, then they become the faculty. So this is a new track for them. Okay, and I think so we provide some of the stuff from fund. This is only the expense. It's not the equipment or not the salary per se. 
It's just you can spend the money as much as uh, in the one million uh, uh, NT per year, okay, you know, doing this way. But the most important is, is not the money, it's the mentor. The senior professor has to guide him, give him a good project, discuss with him daily, okay, to mentor this person later become an independent faculty. Of course, the guideline is that, the, the yastic is that you have a really outstanding publication. One, that's enough. Okay, the second is you received the most. The Minister of Science and Technology's grant, so you can do your independent research. If you reach one of them, then you can be an independent faculty. And so, but so-called independent still within a center that I later I will explain to you. So through this track, we have 12 younger assistant professor in, in this range. And right now we already have two so-called mature become the assistant professor. So that's called a cultivate our own. Okay, then I had to change the so-called promotion system. And this is tough. Okay, in Taiwan, everybody get a faculty position is tenured, start from assistant professor. There's a union, you wait to say, is it, you declare that he's incompetent, you want to fire him, we see you in the court. Okay, it's extremely troublesome. That make this system very difficult to handle. However, this university is exceptional. Okay, so we build a system in terms of that indeed, okay, that you, within six years of the assistant professor, you have to be promoted. If you don't, then you, you should go to looking for the second tier or, or third tier of the university as a faculty. Okay, then as an associate professor, within nine years, you have to promote. Okay, of course, we can extend four additional years. That is exactly like the Harvard and the Yale and the Hopkins systems in that way. Until you are full professor, you get tenured. Okay, so that's so-called private university, we can do so. In the public university, Everybody's their own boss. Okay, it's extremely difficult to fight. Of course, I hope the minister of education, the minister of education, is here so he can listen what I say. Okay, anyhow, so that's exactly it's conducted in my university. It's working quite well. Okay, because the every faculty recognizes that is the way to move this university to the top rank. Okay, so. Next one is the restructure of the university. Okay, the traditional, every department is only seven to 11 professors. It's very, very small. Okay, and I emphasize about the teaching. Okay, and in terms of each, each department is so structurally, strictly structured. Okay, so there's a lot of boundary between the, the different department. I said that's not big enough. So we have to open the boundary, become a college. Use a college as a unit, okay, to teaching you a major. So for example, college of the medical school, okay, the school of medical uh, uh, medicine, school of the Chinese medicine, in that is college as a unit. I think that soon, the minister of the education immediately adopt this process. So now, encourage every university to use the college as a unit to teach. And this is nothing new. Okay, in the US, it's not only the college as a unit, it's university as a unit. The student can take anything they want in the entire university as soon as you have the guts. Okay, you are not afraid to flunk. Okay, for example, biological science, you can take an engineer course, no problem at all, if you are able to pass it. Okay, of course, engineer professor will flunk you in second if you are not do well. Okay, and in Taiwan, you cannot pass the courage. That's not right. That's the reason we want to open. Okay, that student can take any course in university. Right now, we have aligned together with Asia University. They can take the course from the Asia University in any time, anything they want. So that's what I say. University without boundary. That's very important for this part. So I restructure of the, this college into eight. Okay, and each one is there a couple of department or one department, but most important is the graduate uh, training. So there is a graduate course, a graduate student in Abdevo. Okay, and so um, second is a building research center across the university. That, those are the college in terms of vertical administrative units, but the most important is connect 
they all different college together in terms of research subject. So we built uh, several ed research center across the, the uh, campus on the strength of the faculty, such as Chinese medicine and acupuncture, okay, Chinese herbal medicine, uh, tumor medical science, brain disease, inti uh, inti integrative stem cell, immunological disease, and biomedical engineer, and agents. Okay, the bottom two, we are just in the process to build. Okay, but the, the up six, we are really uh, more or less quite established. Okay. I, okay, so, and then the key is the so-called established graduate school. Uh, the graduate school in this country is not a new, is not a concept. Okay, and so in the US, the graduate school is a common sense. Okay, most of the uh, research university, UC, UT, we ha all have a graduate school. I emphasize about the graduate study. So we build the graduate school as a dean of the graduate office, okay, take care of all these parts. Okay, and so, and of course, because of that, so we have to select strictly the mentor that who can teach our PhD students. Not all the faculty enter the university that are able to teach the PhD student. So we selected that process in there. And then encourage, okay, each PhD student to have a commenter, okay, cross disciplines. And those commenters can be come from not only this university, but also come from other universities. We encourage that. So that allows the student indeed can breathe, to cross the different kind of discipline and then get different talent from other universities to help train our students, okay. And then, of course, the core facility and how well, okay, we have many, many core laboratory, but you can take a look about the cancer center. We have heavy particle treatment center. And these two, we are in the process to build called a heavy ion, okay, carbon, heavy ion, and also the proton. Those are really update. I think they will be imported from Japan. Okay, and the other one is called a two photon micro. This is not uncommon, but built by ourselves to a completely new one is uncommon. Okay, we build this two photon microscope very different from this from the other company. Okay, because we are able to do so and have a different kind of purpose. And we also have a metabolomic core, okay, specific for Chinese medicine because they integrate together will be an important. Uh, uh, tool for this type of study. Then the other one is teaching and research environment improvement. Okay, again, uh, building large co-op, cooperate laboratory, huge one, so that every faculty can see each other. Uh, it demolish the boundary between the, each laboratory, because originally they don't feel comfortable, but gradually they know this is much much easier to do. Okay. And of course, this is very different from the United States. United States has no big common laboratory, okay, except a small institute. And we are considered as a small institution, so we should build a common laboratory in that way. Okay. And then the teaching excellence. Take a look about this one. So our students come in, okay, undergraduate students, how are we going to mold them, become so-called the professional? and become a different kind of uh, disciplines in here. Usually we have a two track, okay? One is go to the PhD or MD, PhD, and later become a professor, okay, to teach our students or to serve the, in the other universities as a faculty. The other one is direct, go to industrial, okay, to the PhD training, cooperate with industrial. So the industrial will know what kind of the, uh, expertise they want. And so the industrial expertise will come with university professor to join, jointly train those students. So after they finish their PhD, they can direct immediately go to the industrial, save us an R&D person, or save us the important people in the company. And this program are well, very well welcomed by many companies, like at least in here, High Wind, Okay, Yongxin and the Mingtong, several of these companies. And so right now, we have 38 PhD students is training through this process. Of course, they get a really high pay, so they like it very much. Go to the faculty, it's a long-term goal. So of course, the people have to think very hard whether I want to go to the long, okay? But anyhow, 
As soon as they get trained, you go, we are recruiting 100 faculty, so you can come back. Right. Building the academic and industrial cooperation program. Okay, that's this one, you can see funding by the university and college cultivate academic and industrial development of talent project. This is exactly what I say. It is a program, you know, you the, the master student enter the PhD program two years on campus training and two years go to industrial. And I talked to the Minister of the Education. I said, this is probably the best program so far okay, that minister can uh, provide because that provides some funding for the university that pretty much emphasize about the application. Okay, so therefore, this is a good bridge for them. Okay. And the next one is the nature in talent medical students. And then come back in terms of the, our MD student. You know, Taiwan and Korean and the Japan probably also the same thing. The best student always enter the medical school. Okay, and that's because of the best student enter the medical school. So I hope to train some of the, our medical students become Taiwan's president. Okay, or Taiwan's, not only the president, Taiwan's all the congressmen are come from my university. So therefore, they can listen to president okay, of this university say we have to allocate more fund okay, for our medical education or our education per se. That's the way to influence politics, to cultivate our people. Okay, and so this is an MD PhD program that started from four years from high school, insert the four years in the middle, okay, and allow them to finish the PhD and then go back to the clinical trial. Tra uh, okay, then they can finish their degree, follow their training. But these four years of training are extremely important. Okay, let them to, we are, you know, like uh, uh, President Xin just mentioned here, it's many is emphasize them, okay, how to be a multidisciplinary, how to be a good human beings, how to be a good leader, okay? And so after that, they graduate, okay? They can go back in terms of doing research or they can go to be a physician, it doesn't matter, okay? Because those four years will be implemented, implanted in their brain, so they can do a very good job. That's our expectation. Of course, this track, okay, we also provide a full scholarship for them. So the student would be able to go through without too much difficulty. Okay, and so, okay, the first one is international volunteering. Okay, ask those students to go different type of country, like particularly South uh, East Asia, okay, to do the service, okay, to see all those people and how we can uh, work together and help, uh, help them, okay. And, Next one is a called Developing Academic Best Graduate with World Class Institution Around the Globe. As I mentioned, okay, we want to be a so-called research institution, but we are still short of the a sufficient pool or the excellent faculty that able to guide the research. So we have to borrow the entire world's talent okay, to train our students. So we send our students, PhD students, go to the U.S., okay, say, you start here one year, okay, and three years in the U.S., okay, in the, the top institution, and top faculty laboratory, and uh, receive their training. And that's what we are doing, okay. And then, of course, uh, everybody's complaining, particularly in this country, the graduate program, the student enrollment's getting low and low and low, but this university is the opposite. Okay, our student enrollment is always very steady state or go up a little bit. Okay, unfortunately, the student number is highly controlled by the Minister of Education. So even we want to expand that to 1,000 or 2,000, we still had to fight with them until one day we can achieve it. So that would take some time. Okay, all right. So highlights our future graduate student educations. Okay, finish the new graduate uh, establish a new graduate program merging social uh, and industrial needs. Okay, that's the purpose of the higher education is train the people for the future social need. Okay, that's probably we fit such goal. Okay, then of course we establish commenter system to nurture research talents on special research topics. Again, that's also in certain area we want the students to be focused in that area. 
Okay, developing our English class for better globalizations. Again, that's also quite new for this country that we, all the graduate course is taught in English. Okay, no, no compromising in these parts. Provide a generous scholarship to attend talent foreign students. And this is, please, and get this, you know, please help me to advise, advertise these parts. We provide a full scholarship for all foreign students, foreign PhD students, okay, if they are interested in coming to our university. Okay, full scholarship. And this is inspired by the United States. When I, almost 40 years ago, I received the full scholarship from Berkeley. Okay, that day they can do so. Now it's the time for Taiwan to do so. And Taiwan will be very happy to do so. Okay. Okay. Improving research capacity. Okay, that just I mentioned here. Okay, this is a research capacity, is indeed our goal. So we have set up a center, okay, and try to get all those combined with the uh, uh, hospital, there's also a research center to integrate all of them together. Okay, focus in several area of the research in that. Okay, I will I introduce a little bit about these parts. Okay, so for example, the research center for traditional Chinese medicine, because uh, the reason for that is that this university is probably ranked in the top one or two, top two in the world for the Chinese medicine. Okay, so we have to develop our strengths in here. So this is uh, uh, Dr. Yan, it's a Hopkins trained immunologist with the Chinese medicine has come back to in charge of this center and develop all different kind of things in terms of how to continue to and use our uh, ancestors treasure okay to develop into the modern way so everybody can appreciate okay okay so there are a couple interesting subjects right now and one is the meridian study the other is acupoint and these two is the most exciting one because it's not a, a classical one. It's combined the modern technology. You know, it's not NOVA, but we make the microchip, very, very tiny needle, okay, and then put those ones and stick into the human body. They can detect all the change in terms of microenvironment. Okay, and then to know the 360 acupoint, what's the difference between them? and then go through this meridian and to test in, the, in terms of each pathway in our body is quite different. Okay, this is amazing because that meridian, you cannot see anatomically. It's not blood, it's not nerve system, it's not lymphatic system, it's a mysterious system. And now we want to uncover what it is. Okay, so give us several years. We will tell you this story about that. Okay, and so, uh, Botanical drug and herbal medicine, the second best in the world. And so this one, again, you know, to develop it, the drug development, it particularly is a novel approach, is very difficult. But our ancestors have really told us there are thousands of plants contain a special ingredient that we, our ancestors used to treat the human illness. Okay, and how to get those ingredients come out to be a useful drug, that's our mission. Okay, like uh, uh, recently the Nobel Prize give to the uh, 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 to UU, UU2, okay, it's because of from the Chinese herb medicines in Norway. And so there are thousands are waiting for us to uncover. Okay, so the second one is a Kinder Mission uh, Research Center, the head by our uh, vice president of uh, Dr. Cliff Chow. He came back from uh, Cornell, Okay, as a radiation oncologist, okay, so he no more than no more cancer than I do. So you see, we are focused four kind of cancer. Okay, two is almost impossible to treat at this moment: the brain tumor and also pancreatic cancer. The third one is the breast cancer called the triple negative. The fourth one is oral cancer. That particular in this country, that we have so many oral cancer and also in South Asia. That's our emphasis about that. And of course, of course, we try to develop early detection, okay, specific treatment, and to you know, take care of those cancer issues. Okay, the third one is called the uh, Brain Disease Research Center. This is Dr. Len. Okay, he is the uh, psychiatrist. Okay, and you see the depression. <laughs> I'm talking about depression. I think that 
probably 80% of the patient always suffers a depression, isn't it? Because as a patient is always the biggest, the bigger in the world, always crying without money. We are short of money. I'm the lucky one. My university does not need to beg the money because you see, my boss just said, whatever you want, we give to you, you see. Okay, that is truly a luckiest, okay. Anyhow, so we are trying to develop a tool to treat depression, okay, also develop a tool to do the early detection of those psychological diseases, particular schizophrenia, okay. And particular, this so-called, this kind of mental disease drug medicine usually is not too much effective. So this is an area a completely open. In our Chinese medicine, does have such kind of ingredient for doing these kind of things. That's the reason that we are focused in terms of this mental disease. Okay, right? The next one is a little bit update. So called the Cell Research Center, Cell Therapy Research Center, okay, uh, directed by uh, Dr. Hong, is MD, PhD, and he is in charge of the stem cell, uh, mesenchymal stem cell research. And what is mesenchymal stem cell research is come from our own body, from the adipocytes or from your bone marrow or from your umbilical cord. And this type of cell can fix your disease quite easily. Okay, the other parts we are emphasize about immune cell therapy. And immune cell include the dendritic cells, NK cells and T cells, all these parts. And certain type of disease, this type of disease, uh, treatment is going to be very effective. Okay, it, this is more than a single medicine. It's used the entire cell to do the treatment called the cell therapy. And that is the future of this type of the uh, medicine. Okay, so, okay. Internal, in international research collaboration, as I'm always mentioned, our university is small. Our research center is focused. Our talents need it. Okay, international collaboration is the key to expand, to work together with other investigators in the world. And that's, we have really spread the entire world and to work together in this area. Okay, of course, this is, for example, the Georgia Tech, okay, come to our institution, we set up a 3D printing. So we developed a novel material, okay, to print, okay, as any specific organ we want. Of course, I told them the goal is to print a heart, a functional heart, so we can do the organ, a heart transplantation with a viable heart. And that's the 3D printing, so the major, major ultimate goal. And I say, I hope I can see it before I pass away, okay. Okay, and the other one is the MD Anderson. Okay, MD Anderson, we also have a very close collaboration. It's our sister institution. Okay, we join all the training, all the uh, investigators together. What's the time? We have uh, two minutes. Two minutes, okay. All right, I think so I prepared too much. Okay, so what is the CMU's uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, research breakthrough? I just named a few of them. Uh, one is Zhao Gen Lin. Okay, I already said that he is indeed the world's, you know, the leading figure of, in terms of acupuncture. Okay, the second one is a reconstructive medicine. Okay, that is a, a Dr. Chen. Okay, it's also well renowned. There's so many uh, different countries of the physician come to learn from him. The third one is a liver transplant, liver donor transplant. He already reached to 800 cases. Okay. All right, and the, th uh, the fourth, uh, fourth one is uh, Dr. Zhou. You will see the last figure, the brain tumor. Okay, the longest survival use of cell therapy is already last 14 years. 14 years, not 14 months. Okay, most of the case is 14 months. Okay, but here, 14 years, I'm still alive. Okay, and then, uh, this one does not need to mention. Okay, globalizations. Okay, there are many sp steps to do it. Okay, I will rush very quickly. This is our weakness, but it's also the way that we want to push hard for this part, okay? And get more faculty from abroad and get more students from uh, other country, okay? Okay, um, luckily we are building 
so-called the international partnerships. We choose almost 10 universities, and each university have a really renowned faculty there, so we can send the students, send our faculty to them for foreign training, and they all come to our campus to do these interactions, okay? All right. Okay. Uh, academic and industrial alliance, this is also our goal, okay? Particularly patent strategy, we are, the patent parts compared to KAIST, indeed, we are very little, but 50%, 50% of them, we are transferred to the company. It's really not bad. So we build some company, okay, this is an example, but this is the list we have, it. it's roughly 10 company at this moment that set aside from our faculty and we are supporting them, let them to start to grow, okay. Okay, and so this is a cooperation between industrial and then university, and that's the future, for example, that we are building this called the new CMU campus, 16 hectare, okay, it's going to uh, spend Okay, roughly one billion US dollars, okay, to build this new campus and with the research development district teaching and the aging medical center and cultural and creative district and the medical uh, district in there as a really complete campus. Because uh, each time I always tell my chairman, say, I really envy about Nanyang Technology University, beautiful campus. That's the place I want to take as a body relief, okay. And that's, we hope someday we can achieve that, okay? All right, conclusion, CME has already received numerous recognition around the globe. It remains a daunting task to build a CMU as a world-class university. With the strong support from the university trustee, we should move toward a goal one day, not tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.